Ah, uh, it was one of those days. One of those days Lucifer, the king of hell, despised. His butler, Priminger, called them mandatory events. That if his master should probably attend to some presence as the true ruler of hell. Since these demons often get ideas of your separation, though of course, sire, uh, you always beat them in a fight. Sighing, the fallen angel adjusted his suit. This event specifically was a party between high-ranking rich demons. This one the closest to something Lucifer could stomach. As its host was actually a quite pleasant woman, even though she caused the deaths of her entire family through angels to get their riches quicker. A prideful sloth demoness going by the name of Anastasia, heiress of the Voiceless family. The Voiceless were a long line of quite terrible people on Earth. Apparently one of their ancestors was some sort of Wall Street mogul who made the family so stinking rich most of their family just lazied about nowadays. Anastasia's sister, probably the only family member still alive of that rotten bloodline, being a candidate for heaven. Since she was the only one working diligently trying to add more money to the vault with proper work rather than just modeling or some social media crap. She also had two children herself, so she was actually putting an effort to continue the bloodline as cursed as it was. Plus, she was the only one who attended her sister's funeral for genuine mourning rather than social media clout. However, while Anastasia was a genuinely despicable person, she knew how to throw a good party. Worst of all, this devious little witch knew how to play the game. She knew how to keep her favors in check. She'd be on top for a long, long, long time, and knowing how cunning this monster could be, just before going bankrupt she'd probably shake her way into the Haspen Hotel and be redeemed at some point down the line. Ugh. Lucifer shivered. He could never, ever let this creature pour poison into his ear. With a sigh, he left his bedroom. Preminger was already waiting atop the carriage, pulled by four nightmares, hellborn steeds with burning manes that had wings. They always put quite the impression on Cinnerborn, who usually arrived with the occasions via teleportation or limousines. He crossed his legs inside the carriage as it took flight. Honestly, he used to love flying over the various layers of hell, watching demons kill each other. But once that stupid USA soda company invented Santa Claus, it was ruined for him. The flight was long, as the Void Mansion was at the opposite end of the circle. Not even thinking of the jolly man dressed in red, demons stared up at their king, impressed some averting their gazes after only a peek for safety. Not that Lucifer was actually a tyrant. He had such an inflated ego, he saw himself as so above the lowly sinners that he didn't even see them as people. But of course, the Bible stories of hell were enough to carry the potential fear around him. Ah oh well, as long as he didn't have to move a finger. The carriage soon landed on the street in front of the property. The demons gathered at the entrance, reporters and paparazzi immediately jumping to make way for him. Priminger stopped the carriage at the red carpet. Gnashing his teeth and with a stone-cold expression, Lucifer stepped out. At least the stupid reporters were kept out, though there were still a few here. Oh, he's... He's actually here! Those words were going around. The party had already started. He was fashionably late, as per usual. And he hoped that, just as quietly as he arrived, he could leave. 
You lived in a grand Greek-style mansion. So a lot of windows and seemingly random pillars made out of polished limestone and sandstone. The decoration was kept in a simple silver and red. Framed pictures were hung up on the walls at the entrance hall. A lot of fancy dressed demons were walking around. Your parties were eloquently high society, rather than degenerate get-togethers like regular demons did. Mostly these creatures saw themselves above even that. The most prideful of the pride. And Lucifer knew that at least a fifth of them even saw themselves as equal to him for some reason. A small entourage already was mounting behind him, trying to get his attention, though he dismissed them like the leeches that they were. He had been at your mansion before, for the same reason, a party. But truth be told, Lucifer only came to admire your decor, your taste in Baroque art, decorating the ceilings and frame paintings. That was just classy and he absolutely adored it and quite unfitting for what he usually expected from a demon. A few other demons jumped when one of the many statues around them moved ever so slightly, causing Lucifer to chuckle. He of course knew that your family employed an interesting kind of demon for protection, called demi-automatons. They were hellborn, with bodies made out of rock, usually just ignored as ugly creatures they could in fact be masoned and be turned beautiful. It was strangely cute. Lucifer stepped into the ballroom. It was the second biggest room in the building, only rivaled by the dining hall, and probably just a tiny bit bigger than the grand library on the second floor. The ballroom also functioned as a semi-throne room, as at its opposite end stood an opulent throne on which you, Anastasia, were sitting. Dressed in a blue dress, you wore a silver ruby decorated circlet on your head. Your perfectly groomed silver hair like a veil. Wine glass in hand, you are talking to a few demons. Lucifer knew that the only ones allowed to talk to you were the ones you personally invited. As such, your own entourage was actually quite slim. Thankfully, he was one of the directly invited ones. And it was then, as Lucifer descended the stairs, that his eyes fell upon a red flash. Alistair hissed the king of hell so quietly, not even he heard his own voice leaving his lips. Your party had been pleasant. Well, your party had been a pleasant distraction at best. That was at least until Alistair appeared. Since all of the nobles were so afraid of leaving the gates of the city's outskirts, he was the only one delivering actual news. Yes, just like in real life, the super-rich lived in giant gated communities with their mansions worth millions of souls. Too decadent and scared to actually do anything other than commissioning new art pieces or rubbing themselves naked over their own money. As such, having someone here with class who actually did live in the city, that was a nice change. Alistair was well liked among the high elite, due to his radio show. It was the closest any of these demons had ever gotten to publicly displaying their violent side. As of course, all of them had a torture room somewhere in their mansions, it was just a relatively open secret. You allowed him to bask in some attention from the others, his grin getting wider by the second. And it was then that finally he stopped before you, bowing and kissing your hand. Charming Miss Anastasia, as always. You smiled. 
Always a pleasure, dear Alistair. The radio demon was one of the few who knew your darkest secret. As such, you treated him always with the utmost care. And he loved reveling in that. To the point where he even pretended to actually enjoy romantic gestures. But of course, you were useful to him as well. Supplying him with anonymous tips about the dealings of the elite. Having status as your servants were quite the espionage tool after all. Making Alistair the number one dealmaker in the upper echelon of the circle. Alistair, I hope you're enjoying the party. Of course, my dear. That was a lie. He hated this. You're the only one in this facade-ridden hellhole who serves meat that pleases my platter. Huh. So he still could not tell the difference. Good. You are using synthetic human meat to cater to his cannibalistic desires. Synthetic as in, it wasn't human meat, but the meat of demons specifically bred to taste human. While you were a pro at tasting vintage wines and caviar, to you it just tasted like lean pork. Then again, it was more than likely that Alistair knew, but merely allowed you to believe your trickery worked on him to make you sloppy. As charming as the radio demon was, you simply could not see him as a friend. After all, you were using each other. So, Alistair, how have you been? How are things? I haven't seen you in a while. Smirking, Alistair got up on his feet again. Well, my dear, I've been investing my time and effort in a little hotel. Really? That sounded strangely altruistic for Alistair. Tell me more. Oh, darling, you simply must have heard. The Hasbin Hotel? You hummed amused. Oh, of course, you knew of the Hasbin Hotel. You have been planning on joining it once your money started running out. Mm, I suppose it rings a bell. During the last extermination, we fought back the angels. Um, we did notice a surprising lack of sound loss, did we not? You looked at another one of your highly esteemed guests, who had barged in on the conversation. He mused. Oh, how pleasant, dear Alistair, he smiled. It's always such a hassle to find your peasants to deal with this heavenly riffraff. Knowing Alistair, you met his gaze. There was so much malice behind his eyes, it was Quite arousing. Thank you for dealing with the creator, dear Alistair. Considering his performance during the battle, the radio demon had to admit he was glad they didn't actually see the battle and his embarrassing retreat. Well, Anastasia, darling, I. Uh... Alistair stopped talking as he had noticed a new arrival. What was King Pipsqueak doing here? Narrowing his eyes, he got a delightfully devilish idea, however. He could smack so many flies with a single rock. Darling, he said if he just didn't stare into the crowd for four seconds. I was wondering, would you give me this dance? Your eyes widened. Uh, well, I suppose. You blushed. Usually you declined offers like this, as you saw yourself above it, but someone as charming and respected as the radio demon, who most of the nobles present would call a handsome rogue who was allowed to sneak his way to the top, well, that certainly would cause for some... Delicious controversy and rumors. You held out your hand for him to take. With his eyes focused on Lucifer, who was 
a mere second away from entering your cone of vision, Alistair guided you to the middle of the dance floor. The statues that had been playing classical music all night now chose to play a slow waltz. Alistair was a talented dancer, though maybe his grip on your hand was a little tight, as he was quite excited. You're so close to him, you could feel the heat of his body radiating. Thinking quickly, cunning as he was, he managed to maneuver you in a way to keep your eyes off of Lucifer. And then he began to quietly pour poison in your ears as he spoke. I don't know if you have noticed, my dear, but the King of Hell is gracing us with his presence. You blushed, eyes widening, though you knew not to break the dance. That would be a terrible faux par. Oh, and you're obviously planning something, Alistair. Well, dear, I just so happen to know that the king might be interested in acquiring some new property. He mused. Alistair pulled you closer by your hip for the dance, making you gasp. <gasps> property? Alistair's red eyes flashed towards Lucifer. He was visibly seething. He just wanted to talk to you for a minute to show that he in fact had been here and then quietly leave. But with you being occupied by Alistair, he could not do that obviously. I'm talking about you, darling. He twirled you around aesthetically, so with a blush you smiled, looking right into the radio demon's eyes as you leaned into his arm with a quiet groan. Be his property. It can only be useful to us. Us? Surely this is all the benefits for you, Alistair. Hmm. I wouldn't say that. First of all, he is the king. The only thing more powerful and influential than you. And besides, you think I'd simply let you slip through my fingers? darling. His hand suddenly went lower. He squeezed your ass tightly, and in a way no one noticed. Be my little spy, darling, and I reserve a spot for you at the hotel. <gasps> you gasped. How did you know? He swung you around. The man was playing you like a fiddle. Darling, a lifestyle like yours can only go so well for a time. And this is eternity. Uh, fine, Alistair. But no promises. And here I was hoping for a pleasant little dance number. Alistair's eyes once again followed Lucifer. He was pretending to care about the squabble of one of your VIPs. This might be easier than anticipated. Alistair used one of his shadowy tentacles to distract the bumbling fool next to the King of Hell, so that once again Lucifer's attention was back on the both of you. Darling, let's settle this deal with a kiss. You blushed. Uh, a kiss? Your voice was muffled by the red demon's lips. Impressed, the nobles around you started clapping. And annoyed, Lucifer grunted. You could feel the power of the contract surge through your body. You were not bound to this mission, but damn did it feel good. It was as if all your insides were sucked out and then spat back in. All energy simultaneously leaving your body and then flowing back. Your eyes rolled back. You almost passed out. Did... Did signing contracts with demons feel this good all the time? This might actually be addictive. You wanted more. Right now. But after the applause subsided and you regained your composure, Alistair was 
suddenly gone. Oh, that was quite the dance, my lady, chuckled the fat noble. I, I, yeah, I suppose. You sat back down, taking back your wine glass. Still, you felt a little dazed. <laughs> Anastasia, please, chuckled Lucifer as he scoffed. You are a lady of high rank. I wholly doubt you'd fall for such a parlor trick. You smirked, leaning back against your throne. <laughs> oh, of course not, my lord. You looked at him. The king already had grabbed a martini from somewhere. I am positively surprised to have you here, sire. Well, I would never let the opportunity slide to spend the evening at your side, Anastasia. That lie was so obvious, only a stuffed up noble would not be able to pick up on it. Which, judging by the incredible expressions of your entourage, that seemed to be the case. Ah, oh, sire, I'm sure you have much more important things to do. He chuckled darkly. Of course he did. Like making new duck toys. But, uh, of course, he could not say that. So, am I to understand you and Sir Alistair are a thing? Well, you leaned your head against the throne. He is quite the charmer, isn't he? Lucifer had been upstaged by Alistair before, in front of his daughter, no less, and now in front of the high-class elite of his own plane of existence. No, that would not slide. A fire was burning within him. He couldn't let this go, and he wouldn't. He'd spend the entire evening with you if it meant you forget that pompous douchebag. After all, he was supposed to be the pompous douchebag of hell. Now ah, well, can't be helped. He essentially replaced your group of admirers quite quickly. And he did his best to keep all your attention on him. Which hours later led to you and Lucifer to walk along your beautiful back garden. The air was laced with the smell of earthly flowers. It was difficult but not impossible to have a thriving little plantation down here after all. Lucifer was glad he got you out of there. Now he could charm you. Now he could prove that he was better than that radio guy. You know, Anastasia, I can't remember if we ever spent some time alone together like this. You snickered. Oh, that's because you always leave, my liege. <laughs> that's because you always left before you got the opportunity, my liege. Oh, please, call me Lucifer. You exhaled. You didn't realize you were both on first name basis now. After all, it's only fair. What do you mean? He smiled. Well, since I'm quite aware of your secret identity. You stopped walking. What? He smirked. See, it's the way you move, the way you danced, and the way you smell. Oh, and the fact you have been staying away from food all night. Cautiously, you smelled your arm. It, it was... Rose scented like usually. You used the perfume, a quite strong one at that. Trust me, Anastasia, nothing gets past me, but your secret is safe with me. Your secret was important, as it was the demon you had become in hell. You were a disgusting creature called a bile titan. While your outward appearance was. Fine, a regular-sized human-like demon with long silvery hair and pink glowing eyes and hundreds of small yet sharp teeth. Bile titans had their demonic nature hidden within, 
in a body horror sort of sense, as your kind had no way of releasing bodily waste. Instead, you had incredibly corrosive bile inside your stomachs, that would completely melt down anything you ate. The reason you kept it a secret, however, was a quite disgusting bodily reaction. If you ate too much, your body would overproduce acid to properly destroy the food, causing your stomach to blow it up like a balloon, and the bile to projectile vomit out of your mouth in the worst case. It was the reason that during parties you stuck to drinks, and you spent an hour every day vomiting your excess bile into a plastic tub, as plastic was one of the few things that would not dissolve. Additionally, bile titans had more in common with bugs and insects rather than humans, and that was important in high society. What looked like luscious, rosy skin was actually a very fine and soft chitin. And your eyes being the biggest giveaway that you were in fact an insect, as they were multifaceted, similar to flies. It was why you stayed arm's length away from anyone normally, and so far only Alistair had gotten behind your secret. Um... Why are you embarrassing me, Lucifer? You muttered, panicking. And that's when he grabbed your hand gently. Because I believe that doesn't take away any of your beauty. Your eyes widened. Huh? Hearing that from him now, that meant something. <laughs> How could I possibly have enchanted you, Lucifer? We finally talked up until now. He had too much pride to admit that it was because he was jealous of Alistair. As such, he placed a hand on your cheek, his thumb gently caressing your shell, making you inhale. If you didn't watch out, he could enchant you, and you might actually fall for him. But I'd like to talk to you more. Silently, he added, and maybe find out why that radio jerk is so infatuated with you. Without even realizing, you moved your head forward. He noticed, and with a pleased hum, he kissed you. Boldly so. But it wasn't until your tongue pushed past his lips that he realized... To avoid a public outcry, he now needed to date you. Ah, well. At least for a while. But then, he tasted your salvia. It was sweet, like honey. <laughs> well, maybe it did have some benefits dating you. Ah, fuck it, he thought. Wrapping his arms around your hips, he pushed you against him in a tight embrace. Yeah. Maybe Charlie just got a new stepmom. Thank you for watching my video up until the very end. But before I say goodbye, I would like to thank all of my lovely darling butlers and stewards. Melofia, Anonymous Weep, Sleepy Town, Angel, Zachary, Nicodemus D, Ash Wisdom, Ikea, The Tribute, AJ Anime Girl. Thank you for your support. And one last thing, I would like to thank all of my other lovely mates for being lovely supporters. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.